Hey everyone, for us here from Tyke, let's go ahead and take a look at what you get when you use the Tyke dashboard. Now the first screen that you see when you log into Tyke is going to be the API activity dashboard. Here we'll get an overview of all of the requests that have come in to our managed services. And if we hover over this graph here, we can see which requests have been successful as well as errors. And we can also take a look at the latency between our gateway and our upstream services. And scrolling down, we also have a view of our error breakdown as well as most popular endpoints. And out of the box, Tyke gives you the option to drill deeper into these analytics by looking at the API usage data section here. Now clicking into the first option, Activity by API, we can see our managed services here, and we can drill deeper down into one of these APIs and look at the average usage over time. We can also filter these analytics by API version or by tags if we've associated any tags with this API. We can see a similar traffic activity view based off of how individual consumers are interacting with our APIs. So you see a list of our keys that we provisioned here. And clicking into one of these keys, we see the requests over time based off of how these individuals are using these keys. Similarly, we can take a look at the errors by category based off of this specific key. We can also track popular endpoints across our managed services and go deeper into this endpoint to look at how it's being used. We can also take a look at activity by location based off of GeoID. Tyke also gives you the option to look at errors. So you can take a look at average errors over time. And we can look deeper into these errors by seeing what kind of error codes have occurred. Again, everything that you see can be exported to CSV, or if you're using a self-managed or hybrid version of Tyke, you can go ahead and export all of these into a data sync of your choice. We also have the option to look at the log browser. And so after setting a specific date, we can look at the requests that have occurred in that time interval. And by clicking into one of these requests, we can see the raw request response, uh, sorry, the raw request payload, as well as the raw response payload that has occurred in that request. We can also see all of the metadata associated with that request as well. Uptime data is where you can set up alerting and monitoring on your end services. Now your DevOps folks can use this to monitor the health of your upstream services, as well as look at uptime targets if you set those. Under system management is where we can do a lot of the things that we want to do in terms of reverse proxying. The first option here is going to give us the role-based access control across the dashboard. And so out of the box, Tyke is going to give you the option to set up users and give them specific permission masks uh, across the dashboard. You can also create user groups, set that permission mask, and go ahead and associate users with this group in order to give them granular access across the dashboard. On the topic of API reverse proxying, Tyke also gives us the option to stand up an API here that we want to manage. And after giving it a cool name, you can see that we have different data types that we might want to service our API on. And after providing an upstream URL, we can go ahead and configure the API and you see here that we have all of these different settings from uh, giving that API a category or tag to setting a specific protocol or port. We can do domain-based routing all the way until authentication. Now, after adding a layer of authentication, you might want to go ahead and provision access to your API consumers in order to give them that granular access to your API. Now we can do that under keys here within system management. Here you'll see a list of all of the existing keys that are provisioned across your APIs. We can create a new key for our API that we just created by clicking on choose API, selecting that API that we just made. And here you can set global limits and quotas for the key that you're provisioning access to your consumers. 
Now you might also want to bundle your keys in an API product or security policy, as we like to call it here at Tyke. Now policies will bundle those keys and also you can set global rate limiting and quotas across your keys. This way, any key that's provisioned under this policy will inherit this logic that we've set. Also under system management, we can go ahead and create certificates. We can set up Tyke alerting webhooks and many more things, including single sign-on for the dashboard. Here you can see that we have many different provider types that we want to service our SSO over. And if you look at the left side of the menu, you can also see that we have the option to set up different configuration settings for our developer portal. And last but not least under dashboard management, we have the option to set OPA rules. Now here, and in addition to user groups, you can write what's essentially business logic in OPA language to define global rules across all of your APIs, such as enforcing a specific API authentication type. You can enforce a specific policy when defining your API rate limits and many more things as well. Now that's the basic overview for what you can accomplish in the Tyke dashboard. We have an array of different documentation that you can look over as well. Thanks so much for watching. Take care and have fun.